Good evening, good evening, Kingdom Blessings to you, and welcome to Kingdom Business Podcast. Yes, we are here another day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are excited to be here again with you all another night. If you missed last night, Apostle Daniel Adams, The Supernatural Life, make sure you go back and catch the replay I mean, it was an awesome, awesome podcast. He has a awesome testimony. We just enjoyed every bit of it. And do not cut it off tonight because you're going to enjoy tonight's podcast, The Power of Prayer. We got an awesome woman of God here with us tonight, Lady Tanya Anderson. You're going to hear me call her Pastor Tanya Anderson, Prophetess Tanya Anderson, amen, a little everything for the kingdom, prayer warrior Tanya Anderson, amen, so we are excited, I think so. I'm call her mother, but I'm telling y'all, this, this lady here, she look like a little kid, okay, she looks like a young girl, but she got grown children, grandbabies, a dog, uh -huh. <laughs> but she is a sweetheart, she's such a sweetheart. I'm telling you, powerful. Don't let the size fool you. Just powerful woman of God. Love the Lord. But she's going to come on. She's going to come on and tell her story. She's going to come on and encourage us tonight. She's going to come on and cause us to want to, to go and intercede. She's going to come, uh, come on and want us to get closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody has just been saying, God, I want more. I want to get closer. She's going to come on tonight and show us how to get more intimate with God, how to get closer to God and help us learn how to persevere, to endure. He said it ain't give it to the swift or the strong, but the one that endure. So y'all know how we do over here. We're not going to hold back. We're going to let God have his way. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you once again for Kingdom Business Podcast. We thank you once again for every single one that are listening, that are watching, the ones that's going to catch the replay. We say, have your way tonight. So Lord, we, we, we are excited about tonight's podcast because we know in this podcast, we're going to learn about getting closer to you, hearing your voice, knowing you, knowing your the way you speak, God, in the name of Jesus. We say, have your way. Heal tonight, say tonight, deliver tonight, draw us closer tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, there may be one that's watching that just been having something burning on their heart and they're trying to figure out how to pray. Lord, they may be trying to figure out how I'm going to get through this. But tonight, God, we thank you for clarity. We thank you for breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. Holy Spirit, have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. Amen. Amen. So at this moment, make sure you go ahead and share. We're going to pop up the woman of God. Let me make sure I take this background out so it won't be a whole bunch of it going on in the back. And here we go. All right. Bless you. God bless you. Hi. How are you doing, woman of God? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I hope you are. I am. I am. We are excited to have you on tonight. We appreciate it. This short notice, but I tell you, the Bible says, what, be, be ready in season and out. 
<laughs> so I appreciate you being ready um, in season because I believe this is an in season for us. Amen. 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 So I'm, I'm going to pass it over. What I want you to do is share your name, okay. um, your, your husband's name, your church, and just tell us a little bit about you. And um, then we're going to jump in about prayer. All right. Well, I'm Tanya Anderson. Kingdom blessings to you, Prophetess Bratcher, and to your husband, Apostle. We just honor God for his many blessings and thank you uh, for this opportunity to share and connect with so many around the world. Uh, again, my name is Tanya Anderson. I bring you greetings from Abundant Life Ministries Family Worship Center Woo. in Braveheart, North Carolina. That's wow. 306 Stephen Street. Uh, my husband is the pastor, senior pastor, Kenneth Allen Anderson, and um, I have three adult children, three grandchildren, um, and I'm just excited about what God is doing in this time and this season in our lives. I'm so excited uh, about what God is doing. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about the um, power of prayer. Yes. I want you to just kind of take us back. How long you been saved and what made you? Because, you know, we give our life to the Lord. Some people say, I just never develop a prayer life. Um, How long you been with the Lord? What shift you? Was it someone you watched or God got somebody to get you, your attention? Was it just the Lord speaking directly himself? What shift you into this? I know when I first met you, I'm going to say this, when I first <laughs> met you, that's how I met you, a person of prayer. Wow. A per, you know, uh, we met through ministry connection, but mm -hmm. at first, I don't even think we connected. Right. And something made us connect. We know it was God. Right. And you invited me to a women's conference um, at the mountains. And wow. then I think after that, yeah, it was that far back. Wow. I mean, I remember my husband waiting on the porch for me when he got home, when I got home. Yes. You know, because he wasn't used to me being away. So. Uh, <laughs> she got me out the house, y'all. Wow. And that women's conference, and it lit, I just lit something on. I was just on fire. I was already a pastor, but people don't know, you know, being a pastor doesn't make you shift. Like, right. it should, but sometimes um, you could be dealing with fear, or you could just be dealing with people, or the people you're around, whatever could be, a, um, you know, an influence, a bad influence on you, or just something in your life that you just ain't let go but anyway, I met you. I knew you being a woman of prayer. Um, and then you also were the one who uh, introduced Cindy Trim to me. Wow. Because wow. you told me about the prayers uh, with Cindy Trim. You, some things you just never forget about I, people. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and that's when I first heard about her and, and mm -hmm. warring, you know? Yes. So you, yes. you were one of the ones that kind of helped me get to the warring side of prayer. Wow. So tell us, how did you begin? Like, when did you get, gave your life to the Lord and did just kind of build up on that? Yes. Well, that, that's amazing. That was our women's convention, one of our jurisdictional women's convention at Church of God in Christ in our, in our North Carolina area. But I tell you what, that's, that's amazing. But I got saved. I was, I believe I was about 15 years old. I was in junior high school or, or moving into high school. So it was a, probably, I will say, if I can pinpoint, it was October 1979. Oh, wow. And um, I was sick. I was 15 years old. My aunt was going to uh, Faith Temple Church of God in Christ in Wilmington, North Carolina. That's where I grew up. And that's where I met my husband. My husband's father was pastoring the church at the time. And... Um, I gave my life to Christ. My my aunt witnessed to us and she told us about hell. I knew that was a place I did not want to go. I didn't want I did not want to experience it. Mm -hmm. So I was sold. I was like, no. And um, as they say, I went to a meet one night and uh, uh, what was I'll never forget it. Like you say, there's some things you never forget. Yeah. I'm getting stirred right now. I, go I, ahead. You're going to have to hold me a little bit. You're going to have to, go go ahead. Have to encourage me to calm down because. <laughs> God is just so good. Yeah. And uh, it was a Friday night. It was a Friday night in October. My birthday happened to be October the 22nd. So it's a lot of things that have been happening, uh, Prophetess Bratcher, as I can recall, in the month of October. And I uh, went to the altar. The appeal came and they said, anyone want to be saved? I had been going to the church and I walked up there 
And I and I stood and I and as they as I stood there praying and I asked God to fill me with his spirit. He filled me with the Holy Spirit. He filled me with the Holy Ghost that same night. And I be, I had the evidence of speaking in tongues. This is not anything that I've learned from anybody because I grew up, if it you know matters to anyone, I grew up in the Baptist church. My husband was Pentecostal. And so I just knew that I wanted what was introduced to me. And mm -hmm. so that Friday night, I went to the altar and I accepted the Lord into my heart. And that day, that night, I was filled with the spirit. I was, and I was mm -hmm. like, wow, you know, it, mm -hmm. it just kind of, and, and, and I was just like, I was sold ever since then. I went back to high school. I was in high school by this time transitioning. And I was telling some of my friends and my classmates what happened to me. And I had this young lady that was a friend of mine and she couldn't take the fact that I was saved. She thought I was strange. And she disengaged with me. Um, now she's kind of connected. Uh, she's uh, going to church now. I believe she's saved. But at the time, did not understand. And I was so excited about the transition that took place in my life. Yeah. Amen. And, and I tell you what, I, I never went back. I, I never went back. I so never how, went did back. You, how did you deal with a friend not somebody that you was hanging with decided to, re in a sense, reject what right. you were so happy about. Well, I just, I had to, um, I was okay with it. it. It hurt a little bit, but at the end of the day, my mind was made up yeah. and God had his hands on me. That's what I tell it, uh, people, you know, even when you ask about my life, God had his hands on me even before I realized God had his hands on me. He snatched me out of some things. And yeah. so I just said, okay, to, to the young lady, we had been hanging together, you know, we was thick as Steve, but she just could not handle the fact that I was now saved. Mm -hmm. And so I was okay with that. And I just continued to move on and do what I needed to do to cultivate that relationship with God. Okay. Yes. So what was, so was prayer one of the ways that your relationship, how did you go into prayer? Did you automatically know how to pray? Is it, and I'm asking these questions. You, right. you, probably, you probably know you a pastor. No, I need to ask these questions because we don't know who's listening. Right. And sometimes it's the smallest thing. The one thing I've always said, I always raise my children. You don't, questions are not stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, people be like, oh, that's a dumb question. Believe you me, five more people in the class want to know that question too. They mm -hmm. just are the answer to that question. They just scared to ask. Right. So my question will be, did you know you was praying or knew how to pray or what got you in to know I'm praying right now? Right. You know? Well, um, we, I got married at a young age. My husband was 19. I was 19. He was 18 years old. And he went into the military after graduate the same year, 1983. Graduated from he graduated from high school. I graduated a year before I graduated in 82 and he joined the military that June. We got married that December. Um, he went to Korea for a year. So I was home. You know, we were separated for that time. And then um, by, I think it was uh, 85, if, if you would, we went to uh, Texas. Okay. And that was our journey together as a married couple. And going through some challenging times and rocky marriage, you know, I just was compelled just to pray. You know, it, I just, I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost just pushed me like Tanya, what else is there to do? Just come talk to me. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, he was drawing me. You know, I've seen prayer, I've heard prayer, you know, but it was what was birthed in me. I really believe during that challenging times in our marriage, those rocky times, and when you couldn't call on anybody else, so God was like, here I am, you know, so I gave it a try, <laughs> you know, like you said, that may, you know, that might not make any sense, but I was young in the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, I was, you know, we were in our twenties and, you know, moving away for the very first time away from my family, all the way to Texas from North Carolina, yeah. you know, and I tell you what, I got on my knees and I began to pray and I began to talk to God about what was going on and asking God to help me. And I'll never forget my husband. Now, he grew up in the church. He, his father, background, pastors and bishops and, you know, all of that. And and so when I was on my knees, I was in my room praying and he came through the door and backed up. He said, I backed up. 
And um, that intrigued me. I'm thinking, hmm, you, 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 you was in this thing more than I was. Yeah. But that's when something opened my eyes and I became aware, like, wow, there is something going on in you, Tanya, that even when he came in there, he had to back up. Jesus. I'm, I, my day, ooh. I mm -hmm. made a connection with God to the point he could not even interfere with the relationship that I had with God. Evidently, mm -hmm. I touched, amen, I reached God to the point he had to back up. And that's where that prayer life began. That's where it began. Yes. Jesus. Did he ever tell you what he felt? Or did you ask him why he backed up? Or you just knew it spiritually? Or He told me. He, he, he told me, he said, I came in there, I heard you praying and I, I had to back up, <laughs> you know, and I was like, wow. So that's where I, you know, I believe it first start because I didn't really understand the dynamics of prayer. Even during that time, I knew I was saved. I knew I loved the Lord. I knew I wanted to stay in that place of holiness and righteous living. I connected with a young lady. We were in church together. We didn't hang out with a lot of people. We didn't gossip. We talked about the Lord and we was excited about being saved. We were excited. Yeah. And so when I went, we traveled and from one place to the other, my relationship with God, the intimacy, knowing God grew as I went. We went from one duty station to the next. And I was always in church, always serving. I sung in the choir. You know, I started when we got back, we went to Germany. I was still doing things in ministry. God was developing me. Then we came here to Fort Bragg in 92. And that's when I started actually more working in ministry, being a part of the um, being department heads and uh, Prophet Ratchet. The thing about it that really alerts me again people begin to affirm or confirm things that was in me that I didn't realize. They will say, you know, it's something about your eyes. <laughs> it's, something, it's something about, you know, it's something about you. And so that's, I'm telling you, each and every day, I'm still growing in God. I'm still growing in understanding that mantle of prayer that's on my life. And if I can trace it back, of course, we know it's God. But if I can trace it back to an individual, you know, sometimes we give credit to our loved ones. My, I believe my grandmother was a prayer warrior. I, I, I trace it back. I would hear her, but it didn't intrigue me. I, you, you just knew you was around it. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, yeah, she would pray. And I was like, OK, you know, she's no longer here today. And but I tell you what, I think I can trace that back to my grandmother. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So when you went from do you know how my, I was, my husband's in the military, but you hear, you know, women who um, when they husband go off or they got to go from duty station to duty station. What I thought about was you would say how you was growing in the Lord. It was like, I'm not saying you didn't never get lonely, but right. it was different because you had this relationship with God. It was like God was going with you. Yes. Even though my husband was leaving off and going to work, you know, all day, I'm still, I can have a conversation. So you're telling me this ain't a religious thing. You're telling no. me this is a personal yes. God. You yes. serve a personal God that you can talk to. He right. talked to you. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not a religion. It's, it's a relationship, like you said. And as I grew in the Lord, I understood that it wasn't the religious thing. It wasn't, you know, of course we did kind of get, I got, I'll say me, cause we're you're talking to me personally, got yeah. caught up in the denominational uh, legalistic, you know, because I was just excited about being saved and, you know, no bad stigma or reflection because I thank God for the foundation that I had, but taking this off and taking that off as far as clothing, it, I had to clean myself. I, like, here's my prayer each and every day. Lord created me a clean heart mm -hmm. and renew that right spirit down on the inside of me. So mm -hmm. I knew it took more than this taking off a uh, uh, outward garment and you couldn't wear this and wear that. But I wanted to be pure down on the inside. Uh, and, and, and the more I hungered for God, 
I can say that as it relates to the scripture, the more I hunger and thirst after him, he began to fill me. I didn't know that scripture until I lived it out. Now I can say it. You know, some things we live out and when we hear the scripture say, oh, that's what was going on in my life. I was hungry for him and he yeah. filled me each and every day, each step. Like you said, I held on to God, even through hard times, even through troubling times, uh, even through uh, betrayals, uh, uh, a prophetess Bratcher. I'm telling you, there's some things that I have gone through that I can only tell to individuals because, you know, there, you know, the, there's some people out there right now. If, if I was to say it would do damage and it would do harm, but that's not what my assignment is. But my assignment is to continue to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord and continue to pray and, and seek the face of God. And as God grow me, then I can share with others, you know, the hope that I I have, you know, how God brought you through this time. You, I, I, I went this way. I lean not to my own understanding, but in all my ways, what did I do? I acknowledge him and he directed my path. And so even as the word of God, as you hear the word of God come up out of me, this is how I pray. Mm -hmm. This, the word of God. It's something like you, it was a question that you asked. Have you learned it? Did somebody show you? Um, now, we do have distant mentors, if you will, like Dr. Cindy Trim and John Hanna, different ones that I know that carry that mantle of prayer. I do watch them and I glean from them, but I do not mimic them. That's good. You see That's what I'm good. saying? Yes. I, I don't try to be like Dr. Cindy Trim or John Hanna or Pastor T. Renee Glenn, but I draw from, I, I listen to them and I tap into what God is doing, but I do not try to emulate what they're doing. I have to be my authentic self as it relates to prayer and God developing me. Now, when I look at the, uh, Pastor T. Renee Glenn, I see a glimpse of what God is doing in me. Because I thought I was strange. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, as I pray and, you know, um, and then God will bring forth the revelatory gifts out of me. Even when I'm praying, you know, you know, you, I would think, you know, stay on track with the prayer. But even God will bring up out of my spirit words of wisdom, words of knowledge. You know, I have the discerning spirit, you know, uh, what I'm what you call a prophetic a seer. And that was a man of God that prophesied to me. I didn't know what no seal was. I ain't even trying to, you know, be all of that. But God knew. And he was developing me. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, people started seeing in me what I did not see in myself. Mm -hmm. They said, it's something about you. You know, you, what, what do you see? I'm like, I don't see anything. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I get it. You, get yeah. it. I, yeah. you know, and there's somebody that, you know, you may think you're strange as you're listening, you know, but here's some women of God that understand where you are. I've had people come to me and say, Tanya, I want to share this with you. And, and, and the first thing they say, I don't, I don't want you to think I'm crazy or strange. Well, they came to the right person because I've experienced that. Yeah. Even yeah. the podcast that you were on just the other day, the man of God was talking about uh, prophetic prayer. I said, wow, I think that's what I'm operating in. Yes. I really do. So when you hear certain things, you say, wait a minute, you may not understand it, but it makes sense. And somebody else can give word to it. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I see myself in that area, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that power of prayer is basically, you know, thinking about that intimacy with God, you know. And um, and so even my life, Pastor uh, Tamika, is like um, that that comes out of the scripture in Luke 18, you know, uh, when Jesus said men ought to always pray and not faint. You know, that's where I am each and every day. Do I still have problems? Do I do I, I still get attacked? Yes, I do. But I will not relent. I will not back down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I won't. I won't give up the fight. Amen. You know, I, this is something I share with someone. And even when I minister at my church and some may chuckle um, of this, I said, I'm like a weeble wobble. I may weeble. I may wobble. But guess what? I will not fall down. Amen. Some may think that's arrogant. No, that's confidence. I that's think you all talked about that. That's yeah. confidence in knowing who you are and whose you are. Amen. 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 That's mm. right. That's right. You know, David said, you know, in the, in the scripture it talks about, he said, teach my hands to war mm -hmm. and my fingers to fight. 
we take that now. We may not, of course, a soldier who's in the army could use that as a physical, but also a spiritual uh, a fight. But we use it as a spiritual fight. You teach me how to pray. Yes. You teach me how to teach my, my hands to war, my fingers to fight. Show me the, the what to say, how to say. You could be, I remember being in, in prayer, especially when I was a you know a baby in the Lord, and I was praying scripture didn't, and didn't know it. Wow. And the reason why we able to do that is because you got to remember if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the yes. Holy Spirit knows the word. He is the word. Right. So when it's coming out of you and you saying, what am I praying? You don't got time to think because you just right. got to keep rolling with the prayer and what he had you to pray. And then next thing you know, you go study the word and you be like, oh. like you said earlier, you like, I, this is what I look. I pray knowing it with the Holy Ghost. This yes. is what I pray. He used my mouth. He used my tongue. But yes. this is what came out through me because the Holy Spirit was speaking. But when you have a connection with God, when you have a connection with his spirit, then he would teach you. He said he know all things about the father. Yes. He know all things about the son. So the perfect prayer is scripture and spirit led prayers. Those yes. are the perfect prayers. Right. And then of course we got prayers of thanksgiving. There's different types of prayer, prayers of thanksgiving. Sometimes it's not time to ask God for that same thing again. Mm -hmm. It's time to thank him now. Right. Thank you for it. But, thank you. But Tamika, I didn't get it yet. Speak those things as not as though they were. Correct. You're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you, God, for saving my loved one. Thank you for saving my son and my daughter. God, I don't pray it for 20 years, so I might well keep, I need to go into Thanksgiving now. Correct. I, need to thank you. I need to go ahead and believe that you're going to do what you said you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I don't have time right here crying about it anymore. Because no. mm -mm. mm -mm. we're going to worry. We can't worry and pray at the same time. Now, people say, well, I do it all the time. Wow. Most of the time, if I'm going in worrying, I'm coming out with some faith. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, I might go in crying. And then don't get me wrong, there's going to be times you're going to be an intercessor. You're going to cry and, and what you call travail. Right. You're going to do that. But I'm talking about if I'm going to go in crying about my situation, if I'm going to cry, I'm going to be crying for victory. Yes. Come on. Yes. You know come what on. I'm saying? Yes. So let's talk more about that. Let's talk about when you approach God. Mm -hmm. Say something happened in your life. You approach God. What is like, I, I don't like to really use steps, even though it is steps, but they all kind of go in together. So mm -hmm. we can kind of only break it down by telling you what took place. But what are, what would you tell somebody who come to you right now and say, I, I want my child saved. My yeah. child is running the street. What would be some of the advice you would give? Wow. Well, well, since we're talking about faith and even as you begin to share about, you know, faith, you know, having faith in God, you know, and knowing that God is able to do above and beyond anything that he we, we could ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of us. Yes. And, you know. Again, as the word of God said in Luke 18, as I mentioned earlier, men ought to always pray and not faint, faint. And um we don't know completely the conditional will of God. That's why we all, we should always pray without ceasing. And this is one thing I think about even for that uh, parent that's praying for their son and their daughter to, to be saved and delivered and set free. I have children and there are some things I'm be believing God uh, for God to deliver them. Now, faith is not magic, but it's a systematic uh, spiritual process that brings the past the will of God. Jesus. And we're communicating with him. We're talking to God about it. And this is this is what I've exercised. And I, there are times I've shared with individuals. We're praying to God and we wait for him to manifest what it what is to come to pass. You know, because we may not know all what the will of God is, but we know that we can go to God in faith and believe him and trust him. And so as we're talking to God. Oh, ah, my God. L look at this. When we're communicating and we're talking on the phone, and it's a it's, it's not just a one way uh, conversation, but it's a dialogue. OK. Yeah. And so yeah. what we're doing when you say, well, what should I do when well, you wait for God to respond Hallelujah. Wait and hear what God has to say about this situation? Uh, uh, Sister Bratcher, you know, I, you got me going all kinds of ways right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we come boldly, you know, with the confidence. We know I would tell that parent, you know, go boldly in confidence, knowing that God has the ability to help us. Mm -hmm. 
There are sometimes we don't know what the outcome is, but we believe in God and we're standing in faith. And so we come, we're praying, prayers coming to God in faith, knowing what? That he is able. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew boy said what? I, I, I mean, it, we're in this fiery furnace, but if he don't deliver me, hmm, I know that he's what? Able. Mm -hmm. And guess what? He did it. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. They didn't know what the outcome was, but they say, my God is able. Yeah. And so I would tell the individual, you know, when you're praying that you just continue to stay in faith and believe God, put the word on it because Amen. God watch over his word to perform it. And as yeah. he grew me and as he matured me in the things of his word and faith and prayer, that's one thing I learned. And, and when I go to God, even now, I would declare his word. I say, God, I'm saying this out of your word because you watch over your word to perform it. Yeah, yeah. Not that God is not, he's ignorant of his word, you know, but we have to speak it out of our mouth and we wait on God. We wait on that answer. We trust him and not faint. Amen. Prayer. And, I, mm. and so as we come boldly to him and confidently knowing that God is able to do what he's, what he says he's doing his word, you know, Amen. The Bible says what? In Matthew 7, 7 through 8, it said, ask and it shall be given. Seek, ye shall find. Knock and the door shall what? Be open mm -hmm. for everyone that asks is what? Receive it. And he mm -hmm. that seeketh find it. And to him that knock, it shall be open. You know, I begin to look at this scripture, you know, because some people may say, well, wait a minute. I prayed uh, this way and you said, ask and I shall receive. You know, how are we receiving it? That's one thing, God, because oh, it, it, you receive in, in several ways. You know, God may say, wait, God mm -hmm. may just, or God told David, no, you, you prayed, you fasted, you travail, but David, this is the results of your sin. So I can't bring this child back. So mm -hmm. we ask and we receive. In other words, we're receiving the answer, whatever God mm -hmm. has. I know that may be hard for somebody because we were taught, you ask, you name it, you claim it is yours. <laughs> yeah. On. You know, yeah. and sometimes we pray, we really believe, but God at some time is saying no. And now we're disappointed and we're saying, where are you, God? Mm -hmm. I, I hope I'm making sense. You are. You know, I, I hope I'm making sense. But we have to continue to believe and, and have faith in God. Faith is what the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So what I've learned to do throughout the years, believe God and leave it in his hands. That's good. Trust him, give it to him. If the thing come back up, the enemy, oh, you going, you know, I dealt with fear. Mm -hmm. And this woman of God, you all, I tell you what, that, that, I tell you what, the hand of God is, God has taught her how to war. <laughs> you know, and that book, I tell you, is amazing. And um, I, I'm not ashamed to say, you know, I've been in her their settings with her and her pastor, you know, talking on ministry of deliver, deliverance ministry. But I had to have that one on one encounter, if you would. And I said, no, you know, and she offered. I said, yes, come let just me and you. And there are some things I had to release, some past hurts, some past issues, some past traumas that have gone on in my life. And we begin to call those things out. And I begin. And this is maybe a couple of months ago. And mm -hmm. God gave me freedom. I dealt with fear of flying and I looked at the television one, uh, one time doctor, I think it was, uh, John Hagee was on and he began to minister and he said, you know, some of you may be experiencing this and that it's not a fear of flying. I think he actually said that he said, but it's a fear of death. I was like, Oh, talking to me. Mm -hmm. I, I say, so that's, what's going on. I feared death. Like I wasn't going to make it. If I go, I wouldn't make it back. Mm -hmm. Do the enemy try me with that still? Yes. But I'm, right. I get up in the plane and I still fly. I don't anticipate like I used to. I would talk myself out of it. That's just how tormented I was with that fear. Mm -hmm. But God has lifted that off of me. Thank you, God. And Thank so you. I don't go through that, that ritual anymore, if you would. Or, oh, this and that. But do the enemy bring it back as far as driving? Yes. But I, I put the word on it. I say the opposite of what he's trying to That's plague right. me with. And guess what? It just disappeared. Uh-huh. So we go through things so we can help others. And as we grow in it, we can help others on how to deal with certain things. And now I can tell different ones that come to me. They say, well, you know, Lady Anderson, I'm dealing with this. And I say, well, this is what I do. When those thoughts come, 
I put the word on. I say the opposite of what those negative thoughts and those things that the enemy is trying to plague me with, trying to remind me. I remind him of the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's so good. And, and I'm glad you said that because sometimes we want a magic pill. Yeah. And God doesn't. God don't have to do magic. Mm -mm. Just is God. He's God. He can do the work. It's, you could call it miracle, you can call it one, but it's God doing the work. How fast he want to do it. One thing about God is he doesn't force himself on anyone. So it don't matter if it's our children or not. It don't matter if it's us. Yes. He's not going to force himself, but he will love us to him. Ooh. And that's what he did to every single one of us. He wow. loved me right on in. Yes. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't no turning back. Like you said, 15 years old at that altar. It don't matter if you're 55. 95 right now he'll mm -hmm. love you right on in and there's no love i don't care the best boyfriend husband oh. wife girlfriend oh. your mm -hmm. children yeah much as you love your children there's mm -hmm. no greater love than he is no, no not at all it, it's it's so good that you don't want nothing you don't want anything you know there's nothing to compare to it right you know i've heard people say i've been on drugs and i've been high as i could go but this high right here <laughs> mm, mm, mm. That, that stuff right here had no, nothing compared to that right there was nothing compared to what I'm experiencing right now in the presence of God yes wow in the presence of God yes the Bible said in his presence there's fullness, fullness. of joy I'm telling you, he will lift the burden and he will destroy the yoke. You know, when we're praying and this is one thing about it and I've learned and, and I've, I've kind of pinned some things from others and, you know, where prayer is not a vocal performance. Jesus. I heard someone say, you know, but it's a, a, a it's a, a, a relational communication with God that Tony Evans um, said. And so prayer is a discipline in which we communicate with God. And so the more we pray, prayer is also an act of worship that glorifies God and reinforces our need for him. And so you spoke concerning that. So that's where I am. It, 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 it's, it's, it's beyond just asking, asking God, I need this, I need this. It has turned into an act of worship to glorify God and reinforce the fact that I need him. I cannot do it without him. And I guess what? I don't want to do it without him. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So prayer is a relationship because I have a relationship with him and he's my father. I call him Abba Father. I can go to God in prayer when I need him. When, yes. And just the fact that because of who he is, Hallelujah. you know, and not only that prayer, just like we said, prayer is not, is, is, you know, coming up in church, you know, like when I said, it's not a vocal performance because sometimes you know, if we're not careful, we get up. Well, I don't pray like this one. I've heard people say, well, I don't pray like, you know, Pastor Tanya. And I don't pray. See, that's a religious uh, mentality. Uh -huh. Or, you know, that we've grown up to and we have to let that go. What do you mean you don't pray like me? Yeah. Prayer is talking to God. That's right. Now, he may, my delivery may be different. Come on. Come on, <laughs> Pastor <laughs> My daughter pray. I mean, God is just hands on her. I mean, I see others in our ministry, our prayer team. Everybody delivered different, but I go to war. Jesus. And if I can go back just a little bit as I thought about that, how God birthed that in me. I had a dream. I was in Texas. Here it is again. That's where ministry began in me. Come on. That's where the call of God came upon my life. I was in at Fort Hood, Texas, Colleen, Texas. And I would have dreams of casting out devils. Come on. And this dream was, I when I got fearful, it was prevailing against me. But when I put on strength and I stood in the power of the Lord, now I, remember this is in my 20s, so I'm still growing in God, but I had this dream. And so when I oftentimes share that, the more I said, no, you know, I stood in my strength then I prevail over it. Jesus. It wasn't until I got to North Carolina that I started engaging in, you know, uh, deliverance ministry where, you know, individuals will come and we're praying and the demons will manifest. And that, that would, that's when the manifestation of the gift was being in full bloom then. Now yeah. think about it. The dream was in Texas. It, it's some 10 years or so later, 
it start the gift started manifesting and, and I was able to, you know, activate what was going on in the inside of me. God is saying now mm -hmm. it's time. Mm -hmm. And it's been on. Oh, it's been on and popping ever since. <laughs> so, so, yes. And I would not, I wouldn't be afraid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so even now, you know, uh, at night, I'm telling you, the enemy would try to attack me at night. I'll wake up. Even now, what I'll do is I'll put on Dr. Cindy Trim's uh, prayer, uh, rules of engagement, and I'll let that play. Or I'll put on some prophetic worship. And I let it play and I go back to sleep. Or oh, I'm waking up praying. That's what's going on with me now. Hmm. So yeah. it was one stage after another as God was just taking me. He would wake me up. I would intercede, you know, intercessory prayer. It, it was just one step at a time. And I'm continuing to grow in what God is doing in my life, you know, not hmm. only personally, be, but for others. You know, and, and I and I just I just accept where God has me, you know. What would you tell someone who's they feeling God pressing them to get up or pressing them to pray and they just keep missing it? Like mm -hmm. I'm just gonna roll over. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, I'm just gonna keep watching this movie or whatever. What would you say to that person right now? Get, uh, what would you say to encourage them? Okay. Wow, I would say you know, please, I, I, I employ you, amen, to pay attention to that, um, not, to, not, a, not to allow another day to go by without being obedient to God, yeah. because we're, we're getting ready to prepare for the prayer encounter, and Prophetess Bratcher will be um, our prayer warrior at that time, if you would, for that Saturday, next Saturday. And I had the team together and we were just kind of going over some things. And I shared with them then how there were times when I would wake up and I'd turn back over and go to sleep. And the spirit of God convicted me because he was like, Tanya, this could be some, you know, I'm, I'm raising you up to pray and stand in the gap. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And that what was God was confirming even through this process of the encounter. You know, he was said, you know, he was confirming the assignment. You know, God is called who was standing in the gap. You know, like he, he had said he, in, in Ezekiel and there was nobody found. Yeah. But there was Moses in Exodus where he stood in the gap because God's wrath was against the children of Israel. So I encourage you as an individual to, to, to press into that. Don't allow, get up anyway. God will restore your sleep. Amen. Be be, yes, he will. Rest, he will. And, and because you know what God may be waking you up to maybe so, you're stopping someone, you know, from having an accident. There's some, could be some traumatic things going on. And God said, I need an intercessor. I need someone to, I need to wake you up to stand in the gap because you're holy and you're righteous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, and I need you. Look, see, God needs us. Look mm -hmm. at that. He is God. He can do anything, mm -hmm. but he needs us because we are ambassadors. We're representative of him in the earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. When he yes. told Jesus, Jesus went away. He said, he said, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a give gifts to men, you know, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I'm a pour my spirit in you because yes. I have to go away and greater work shall you do. Why? Because I go to the father. So we're doing those greater works. So yes. I encourage you to yield to God, get up. You say, I got to go to work the next month, but God will restore. I tell you, when you be obedient to God, he will pour back into you. I've experienced that. And I would just wake up. There are times I had to repent because I did go back to sleep. And I said, Father, forgive me. Yeah. For, forgive me for, for not waking up. I wake up now, two and three or four o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, what do I do? I said, okay, I, I didn't learn my lesson. <laughs> you know, I didn't learn my lesson. And so I want you to take it seriously because it is God. You are, you are important to God. You are an ambassador. You know, you represent the kingdom here in the earth. And mm -hmm. it's not just by accident or happenstance that God is waking you up. Jesus. You know, so be encouraging that and press into it and be obedient and yield to the Holy Spirit when he wakes you up in those odd times. He want to he want to see, too, I believe, if he can trust you with this. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. see, it's not always convenient for us. Yeah. Come on. 
So now do God wake me up like he used to do to, to pray? Now I wake up, but like he did back then, you know, he was like, okay, I'm going to test this young lady to see if she's serious about it. I want to train her in this, you know? And so even during the day now, the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit will pull me in and I get in there and I'll get on my knees and pray. And I'll talk. And it's nothing about me at this time. It's yeah. about what he wants me to do and represent him in the earth. Amen. So the goal of prayer is to make heaven visible in the earth. Whatever yeah. we find on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever mm -hmm. we loose. Ha, reba, si quiero la bolsaya. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. whatever. Hallelujah. So that is the goal of prayer, communicating mm -hmm. and talking to God to make heaven visible in the earth. Mm -hmm. You know? Amen. Yes. Do you do you always know what he wants you to pray when he wake you up or you just go to your prayer closet, get on your knees or wherever? Do you always know or are you just telling us to get up and move? Get up and move. We don't, don't <laughs> always know. No. You yeah. know? The monk, you know what? As you ask, ask that question, one thing that came to my mind, like Moses, Moses said, I can't speak. I can't, you know, but he said, you know, but he said, the day that you open up your mouth, I'm going to speak for you. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we may not know, you know, God may give us a glimpse, you know, but then there are times we won't know. And it's not always clear which way God will go with our, even when we're praying with our request, but you know, we are praying without season, but then there are times we don't know which way God wants with us. So we're waking up. And so when we wake up, he'll make it clear. Yes. He told Abraham, what? I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, get up from where you are and leave your country and your family. He mm -hmm. didn't know all what was going to happen, but he got up and was obedient mm -hmm. to do what God has commanded him to do. So we may not always know what we're getting up to pray about. But when we wake up, the spirit of God, he will begin to minister. You know, I'm like, God, you know, I'm waking. I don't know what's going on. And he will give it to you. He mm -hmm. will give it to you. He will give it to you. I want to say this and want you to jump in and just pray for us. And then after that, I want you to tell us about the prayer encounter um, where you was talking a little bit ago about you don't know what you may be stopping while you mm -hmm. pray. Mm -hmm. I remember a few years ago, I was in my room. I was, I was, I wasn't planning to pray. I was kind of walking and you go through different transitions in prayer. You might have no times you're on your knees. You might have no times you will walk while you pray. You right. might have times you straight on your face, on your back. Mm -hmm. You may be laying across your bed. You know, like she said, you can't count, you can't box God. Right. It ain't, oh, I saw mother Sally do it like this. You may start off like that, but God may start wanting you to walk. I remember when I first started praying, I wanted to get on my knees, but I could not get on my knees. I would always end back up on my two feet, walking, pacing back and forth. Yes. That was the only way I could feel the flow. If I got on my knees, it was almost like I was, the spirit would leave. Wow. Wow. So it was like, you got to know the posture, you know, don't make it so much of the posture of right. on your knees mm -hmm. and just listening to the spirit of God or how he wants to do it. You might be on your side. I don't mm. know. Right. <laughs> so you go in your living room and squat on your seat. I don't know. You know, you know, and sometimes it's some strange stuff, but that's between you and God. And mm. a lot of times he wants to see if he can trust you. Okay. Correct. Correct. And he ain't about going to tell everybody. Right. It's you and God's intimate time. He yes. said, when you pray in secret, he'll reward you openly. Mm. And there's some special intercessors, you snipers. So you don't go tell everybody what you just prayed for. Correct. You go in and snipe and come on back out. Yes. And go on back to bed or whatever. And don't nobody don't even know you went and you done took the enemy out of that person's life. You don't even they don't even know and they don't post to know. Mm. It's some people out here God want to be able to trust just like that. You ain't got a blast it to everybody. That's you right. Know? So, uh, and there are seasons he did that for me too. I, I couldn't say nothing. Right. It was, this is your assignment for this moment. Mm. So um, a few years ago, I was in my room and I was, I don't know if I was making my bed. I don't know exactly what I was doing, but I felt this, this pulling to pray. And I wasn't even praying for my son at that moment. I just began to just naturally pray. It's almost like God took me into a normal prayer, a natural, just a normal prayer first. And then all of a sudden I started crying out. I went into travail for my son. 
I didn't know what particular thing. And I was just like, cover them, God. I was covering the tears coming down my face. And it was like my body stood still. Like sometimes you get in there where you, what you do don't mean a thing. Yes, yes. Lifting your hands, all that will lift the Holy Ghost a, a lift, you know? So i just, I was stiff, but my tongue, and it was, they were coming out so powerfully and I couldn't stop and the tears was coming out and I couldn't move. It was just like I was stuck. And I, and once he released me from it, I was like, what was, you mm -hmm. know, I didn't feel any fear, nothing. So I'm talking to my apostle uh, probably about a day or so later. And she was like, um, yeah, my son was letting me know that your son almost got hit by a truck. Wow. And I said, what are you, what are you talking about? Because some reason he didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. So um, I call him. I'm like, son, what, what are they talking about? You about to get hit by a truck? And he was like, oh, ma, I didn't tell you. You know, mm -hmm. children. Sometimes. Right. So I was like, no, what happened? On this day, I was riding and he started. I said, wait a minute. I said. I, Holy Ghost remind me that's the day you prayed. Mm -hmm. I said, about what time was it? Well, mama, I was, I think he was leaving from work or something like that. And it was around about this time. I was like, son, that was the time you dropped in my spirit. I couldn't do nothing but pray. And I wasn't praying like stop the accident. None of that. The tongues was like straight warfare. Wow. And the tears in my body were just literally like it couldn't move. And once he released me, it was like I, I, he didn't let me feel no fear. I didn't get because I probably would have picked up the phone. I don't know what I would do. I would have did what a mama did. But yeah. he didn't let me know all that information. Right. So when he told me, he said, Mom, I was at a stoplight. He had told the churches where I was at a stoplight. He said, Mama, the, even a truck driver, this is a 18 wheeler, y'all. He Ooh. didn't even know why his truck did it. Mm. His truck, he wasn't even turning that way. His truck did something crazy. And wow. he was coming straight to my son. Jesus. To the, his driver's side. And when I tell y'all this truck was so close, my son could roll the window down and touch the hood of the 18-wheeler. Wow. That's how God stopped it before it hit his, his um, car door. Hmm. He said, Mama, it was just that close. He said, but guess what I did? I said, well, Mom. He said, Ma, look at that truck. I went into a praise. Ooh. He said, right there under that steering wheel, I went into a praise. And when I went into that praise, he said, I started praying in tongues, and the man beside me thought I was having an anxiety attack. <laughs> he said, oh, I didn't care. He right. said, I shouted and everything in that car. Come and he on. said, the cars were just a going. And then he said, I was just giving God a praise. Because he said, ain't no way that truck should have hit me. Mm. It should have hit me. Yes. It didn't put a lick on that car. He said, I rode the window. You could touch the hood of the 18 wheeler, y'all. Wow. He said that when he calmed down, son, the person was like, I thought you had anxiety. He said, No, I was praising God. Mm. I was praising God. I said, Son, I said, at that exact time, I was praying. I didn't even, like I told y'all, this wasn't like an intentional, I'm going to go and pray for my son. It was none of that. Like um, like Pastor said, you got to be ready to pray when yes. God said move. Move, yes. Because you don't know. You don't know. Don't get me wrong. I've been there. I've turned over. Mm -hmm. I've been guilty of it. Right. And I was like, Lord, forgive me. Then I'm mad because I want to be there with him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's a whole feeling when you get with God and you're in a relationship right. and you feel like you miss your moment. Moment. Oh God. Exactly. You know, it's like if you want to think about it carnally for a minute, it's like you had a date with the best looking man or woman in the world. Mm -hmm. And you can make it that night. Wow. Come on. Think about that a million times. Whoa. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. A million times. Uh, over. And you miss that moment with him. And you be like, God, please forgive me. Help me do better. God, help me do better. Because that's he's your father. Yes. Not like your earthly father's good, but he's your good, good father. Good, good father. He cares about everything, y'all. Everything from the smallest to I need to get my laundry done. I don't got enough change to get it done. So I need some gas in the car till I need a whole car. I need a whole house. My children need to be saved. My husband need to be saved. I, I need to be healed in my body. He cares about everything. Yes, 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 yes. Everything. Yes. 
If you care about it, he care about it. Yes. When you don't even care about it, he still care about it. Yes, he does. Mm, mm, mm. So, My Pastor, God. I want mm. you to take a minute and I want you to pray whatever God got, any words that God got on your heart. And then I want you to pray for us to just be stronger in our prayer life, more sensitive to God in whatever ever way that God releases for you to pray for us. If you take go against the enemy, whatever, yes, just be ready. Be ready. Amen. Amen. Again, I'm just... I'm just at awe of what God is doing because even in this, he's stretching me, mm -hmm. you know, he keeps uh, bringing me um, on different areas and different platforms and he's stretch, he's stretching even me, glory to God. And I'm saying yes to your will, yes, yes to your way, understanding that it's not mm -hmm. just uh, bringing me to be seen of men, but there is a need. Amen. Uh -huh. And just and, and and so I'm I'm saying yes to the Lord. And so I want you to be encouraged and knowing that when we pray, prayer with with faith, it, it, it becomes it brings about release. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then even when we're praising God and giving God thanks, it brings about uh, 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 the presence of God and the peace of God and the power yes. of God. So yeah. prayer, amen, it, it takes us into various dynamics. Amen. And so when we pray, amen, hallelujah, we have to know that God hears us. And we, even as we're preparing for the, the encounter, I begin to uh, look at the focus. It was desperation. You have to be desperate for God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Like Hannah was in blind bar made us. I don't care how strange it looks when you're going before God. I don't care how it, it just looks out of the norm. Amen. Think about blind Bonimaeus. He did not care. Amen. They told him to be quiet. Jesus. Don't trouble the master. But he began to cry out even the more. And God said, look, he turned to him. Glory to God. I want you to get into a, like a pastor Tamika said, it's not so much of the posture, but I want you to get into a position of desperation to, mm -hmm. it, do, it doesn't matter how it mm -hmm. looks to, to your family, to your friends. I've sat on the floor, amen, when everybody was out of the house, I went screaming and hollering through, because I don't want any hindrance, I don't want nobody looking at me, like you done gone crazy, no, I'm yeah. desperate for God, and yeah. guess what, I may be, I may be uh, praying something off of your life, leave me alone, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> leave me alone, yeah. hey, you don't know, hallelujah, so that's why I like it sometimes, when there's nobody around, and every, now they respect the prayer mantle that's on my life. Don't get me wrong. They understand where I am. Hallelujah. But sometimes they're like, what is going on with mama? <laughs> Glory to God. I trained my children. You know, when we were here, you know, some years ago, we were in Spring Lake and I, we, we got on our knees and prayed. Yeah. And don't, I know people are doing things different, but I, I grab my grandchildren now. Don't let that go without training even the next generation to that's do right. what you did for your children. You know? That's and they, they knew I would stay down there a long time. But I said, this is what I started doing for them. I said, we're going to have prayer. I said, but guess what? In a few minutes, you can get up because mama going to still be down here. <laughs> because I knew they couldn't handle what, what yeah. I was doing. I didn't want to make them to stay down there for hours. Yeah. And I said, well, you, I said, but in a few minutes, don't get up too quick. But in a few minutes, you can quietly leave. <laughs> That's how I trained my children. It's coming yeah. back to me. Yeah. Because I was going to stay down there travailing. Amen. And stay in prayer. Because guess what? Prayer helps you to get through those difficult times. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you can't go talking to everybody about every issue. It will contaminate. Yeah. It won't resolve the problem. It will only make it bigger. So mm -hmm. you have to take it to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord. Hallelujah. Wait Lord. on the Lord and be of good courage. The yeah. word of God said, hallelujah, God, he will strengthen your heart. And as we go into prayer, and this is another thing that I do. There's a certain sound that I have to hear. Mm. And I didn't understand that at one time, but there's a certain sound. You think about it, what God kind of took me back to when Saul had a tormented spirit and it was David that played on the heart. And it began to soothe him. I said, okay, God, can I identify that with the sound? I, there's a sound that I have to hear. So as we're going into prayer, you may you may hear a little sound. And, I, and it's just like a, a music that kind of provokes 
even the prophetic, it just kind of stirs, huh? Can I pray without music? I can, but it's something about accompanying that. That's why we're going to have Minister Deshaun Bratcher. By God, we're yes. going to fight the good fight of faith. We're coming yes. after every demonic force in the name of G every tormented spirit has to go in the name of Jesus uh, burdens will be lifted that's why we're telling people this is not just another event hallelujah now I don't want you to come here just to show up but I want you to come desperate for God we're believing God all of us is on the altar but there are some of us that we're going to be helping we're going to push you amen to get to that place in God, hallelujah. Yeah, we want to yeah. experience God. Uh, yeah, hallelujah, yeah. as John said, he took me into a place, a realm that I've never been before. Yeah. Ah, well, so yes, as you're yes, your yes, hands yes. right where you are. Yes. I know we said a lot of things and we mixed them together, we put them together, but I hope you get the gist of it, hallelujah. Yes. As we're believing God and we're trusting God, yes. that no eyes, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, nor yes. has Entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store. Yeah. So, Father, we thank you right now. We bless you, oh God, because of who you are. We give you glory. We give you praise and we give you honor. We yeah. come to you, God. Hallelujah. In the name of the resurrected yeah. Lord, who we are, that every knee shall bow, every tongue yeah. confess that you are Lord God. And yeah. we expect and enforce your plans yeah. over and against, oh God, yeah. every device of the enemy in the name yeah. of Jesus. Yes, we decree and declare that in this battle nothing internal external whatever the weapon is it whatever is formed it will not prosper will against not your prosper. people people are watching right now they need your help right now yes, 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 they are yes, on every hand but god we thank you that you're delivering and you're setting us free yes. god yes, we right. thank you lord we ask yes, that you yes. would bless and touch marriages yes. right now yes, somebody oh god is on the brink of committing suicide and that's yes. it i can't take yes. it anymore Ah, uh, what's the use of living? But I speak to you, woman, man, boy, girl. I say live. I say live. You shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. God, we Hallelujah. I want you to begin to speak to yourself. Hallelujah. You've grown up and your parents or somebody may have said you'll never amount to anything. But I want you to open your mouth because death and life is in the power of what you say. And you begin to say out of your mouth uh, hallelujah i am fearfully and wonderfully laid yes made. yes I'm fearfully and wonderfully oh, made uh, the oh, greater oh. one lives on the inside of me greater yes, yes. that he that's in the world say it hallelujah. i can do all things through hallelujah Christ. That gives me the strength. Uh, I bind and rebuke that dumb and mute spirit right now. The enemy wants to silence you. You say, First Lady Anderson, I don't feel it right now, but it's not in the feeling, it's in faith. Uh, I want you to open up your mouth right now. Say something. Open it up. Say, declare it out loud. Hallelujah. Glory. Say, you say, I can say it within myself. Hallelujah. Because God knows, but I want you to speak it out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Not only God hears, but I want you to hear it. So it will be a resounding sound, not only in God's ears, but in your ears. Minded, honey, oh, see, kind of oh, us. Glory, glory. Right now, glory. I want to give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will lift up my eyes into the hills. Yes. For when yes. coming my help, all yes. of my help yes. comes yes. from yes. the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. He is the maker yes. of heaven and earth. He will yes. not suffer our foot yes. to be moved. He that keepeth Israel, my God, yes. he never slumbers. He's not sleeping. Hallelujah. No, it's very wait on him. Wait on the Lord. You say, how do I wait? I wait uh, with great expectation. Uh, yes. that my father hears me and he loves me. Yes. And he yes. cares about yes. me. Yes. Uh, yes. We give you glory. Thank and you, we Jesus. give you all the glory and honor. Yes. 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 We thank you for this moment. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Even off of this broadcast, uh, hallelujah, this live. Uh, God yeah. may be pressing some of you to continue to stay in prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah, even with this live home. Uh, hallelujah, press Hallelujah, uh, hallelujah press. Uh, they gave an acronym, P-U-S, press until something happened, pray until yeah. something yes. happened, push, yes. pray until something happened. Yeah. Hallelujah. What's hallelujah. going to happen? 
Hallelujah. God may lift the burden. He may bring peace. Uh, hallelujah. You may feel a weight, but push. Hallelujah. Pray until you feel a release. Huh? Yes, yes. Oh, Pray until you feel a release. Yes. Ah, Hallelujah. Finished, but I've got to stop. I think I have to leave. Yes, Hallelujah. Power Hallelujah. Uh, I hear the Lord say. I hear him. I hear him saying. Yeah. For someone. Hallelujah. You got to say, I won't let go. Hallelujah. Until he bless me. I won't let go. I won't let go. Jesus. I can't let go until yes, he bless Lord. me. Don't you let go. This is not the time to quit. Uh, this is not the time uh, to throw in the towel. Jeez. This is not the time. Uh, Hallelujah. You said, Hallelujah. but. Yeah, I used to tell the saints, get your butt out the way. Yeah. I'm sorry to say it like that, but get it out the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you say, but it nullifies what came before. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I want you to put, instead of saying, but say, nevertheless. Nevertheless. Hallelujah. Nevertheless. Yes, yes, yes. But thy will be done. Come on. Hallelujah. Say, nevertheless. Hallelujah. Jesus. When it gets hard, say, nevertheless. Okay. Yeah. I just want to come with you all today. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And we declare it so in your life. In yes. Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lady Tanya, I want you to give us the information. Tell us about the prayer encounter. What days, time? Mm -hmm. Share that with us, and yes, I have the website. It is found on. You can go to Tanya, um, yes. Anderson dot com. Okay, yeah. and so I have it on the screen here. So go ahead and share that information with us. Amen. Yes, um, it has changed. It may Tanya in Anderson may have um, um, I may not have it up anymore. I kind of merged. So if they go to Fountain of Deliverance, it's on there, fountainofdeliverance.org. Okay. You'll see the various pages because um, I'm merging Tanya in Anderson with that now. So it'll just be fountainofdeliverance.org. And the prayer encounter is June the 23rd. That's Friday, this ne next Friday. And the 24th, which is a Saturday, June 23rd through the 24th. On Friday, it'd be 7 p.m. We will be in prayer worship um, and we're just coming. Just come. Get in whatever position or posture you need. If you need prayer, we will have those that in those intercessors, prophetic watchmen. They are going to be on the towel ready and, and yielding themselves to pray with you if you need it. But I want you to just come desperate for God. We're not coming in talking. We're coming in praying and getting in the presence of the Lord. Then on that Saturday, beginning at 11 a.m., we have our panel discussion and we're going to um, have uh, the topics are the power of prayer. Um, Elder Joyce Saunders will be presenting. Um, Lady Tanya Williams will speak on the purpose of prayer and evangelist Tanisha uh, Sharp will be uh, speaking from the perspective of the results of prayer. And then your very own prophetess Bratcher will just, amen, take us into prayer and deliverance and impartation. Mm -hmm. I just, I just believe God, the registration has ended, but if anyone desired to come, you ought to be desperate. The reason why you're coming because you're desperate. You're desperate. And God is creating this atmosphere just for you. He said, I did not want to do this. Mm. But God called for it. And guess what? If he called for it, he's going to meet you there and he's going to have individuals there to aid and assist you to help push you to birth your Samuel. Mm. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. What was Samuel your name? Heard. In other words, God here. He heard. He's hearing us even before we get there. Uh, hallelujah. But there's hallelujah. Some that I'm trying to stop past and I'm gonna You're be on here. But there's some things that's trying to that's why we have to constantly be in prayer in between these times because the enemy don't want us to win. He wants to wear you down. But if you desire to come, 
please come. Don't let nothing hinder you. You may say, I don't have the $50. Amen. And you just want to sow a seed, do that. Glory to God. But the reason we have a registration, because it has to offset the cost of what it, it, it entails to, to operate and to function for this conference. And you understand ministry. Glory to God. And there is a registrative packet. In that packet will come the prayer shawl that God has blessed my hands to create, make prayer a habit. And uh, there's going to be a small bottle of anointed oil and some other little goodies and refreshments just to just to have. Amen. But we're just trusting and believing God. We are at Abundant Life Ministries Family Worship Center. That's 306 Stephen Street in Rayford, North Carolina. You'll see the flyer. Uh, go to my page, Tanya Nixon Anderson, and uh, you will see it circulating. And um, we're just believing God. Thank you, Apostle Bratcher. Thank you for just being the woman of God of who you are. Amen. And I love you. And I thank God for you and your husband's ministry. Thank you so much. So much. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. And tell us, how are we able, are we still able to get your book? It's 21 Days of, is it 21 Days of Prayer? Yes. Is that on your site as well? It is. If you go to fountainofdeliverance.org, that mm -hmm. page, I have several pages now. I just kind of, you know, put it all together. So you'll see all the information, our outreach ministry, what I do as far as Fountain of Deliverance. I have a support group, um, Advocate for Domestic Violence. Uh, the best, I've seen it in my family. It has touched my life and I've been an advocate for domestic violence. And so just see how God just brings it all together. And mm -hmm. so I do, the book is 21 days prayer meditation and application is somewhat of a journal. It takes you through the word and a prayer and how to apply all that we have done. You'll see that on the website and there's some other products as well. And so I tell you what, I, 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 my motto is is reaching lives one, touching lives one at a time. Amen. Amen. One at a time. I know you said registration is closed, so they can register at the door, though. Yes, they can. Okay, so you still, even though your registration is closed, you can go to the door. I will pop the um, flyer. Up. It's just if I pop it up now, it won't let us talk with right. it. So yes, I will yeah. pop it at, up at the very end of the um, um, podcast. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Thank you once again, um, Pastor Tanya, for um, coming on tonight. We are excited about next week, what the Lord is going to do. I, in my prayer, I've been asked, I said, God, you know, even up to, to this prayer encounter, take me deeper. Yes. Take me further. Yes. And mm -hmm. when I get in there, I'm going to ask even more. Yeah, God, I'm supposed to be there on assignment, but I still can get something That's from it. The that's Amen. it. I, I still can get it. Little, little, so expectation. little Pastor Tamika, we got all the tools that we need. I tell people, bring your own tissue. We're going to have it. But if when you're desperate, you're going to bring your own your mm -hmm. own lab cloth, your, your cloth that they have to you bring whatever you need to bring. If you need to bring a pillow, just Amen. bring what you need to bring. Amen. Why? Because you're desperate for God. Yes. You know? Yes. Oh, my God. I, mm -hmm. I tell you. God is just so amazing. He's so amazing. Yeah. I, I am. Can, can I say this right quick? When you oh, said yeah. something, I'm asking God the same thing. It was one time we were in shut in and people, you know, I said, well, it'd be just a Saturday because people don't like to go at night no more and until in the morning. I went to a level in prayer. It, it frightened me. I went mm. so deep. It scared me. And I came, I, I was, I won't I, I don't want to be afraid of that anymore. Yeah, that's right. So let's go deeper. Let's yeah. go deeper. Hallelujah. Let's Thank go deeper. You. Amen. I believe God is gonna allow us to encounter his angels. Okay. Be seen. Be seen. We know they're there. Right. But to actually be seen. Amen. We just ask God just to command his angels just to come. Mm. Just to come, just to come. We want to experience everything. God, and it's okay to ask that. He's your father. Right. It's okay to ask that. We're not asking for the, we're not asking the angels. We asking the father. Right. Exactly. <laughs> there is a difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's if I, everything he wants us to experience, we want to experience. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah, man, we can ask him. Look, yeah. you keep stirring and uh, you keep pulling stuff out of me. Look, if the demons manifest and they are illegally there, yeah, 
we can call on God to release That's his right. angels, right? That's right. Come on. They show up uninvited. <laughs> See, we have to put them in their place. Amen. So we can, like you say, ask God to pour it out on us. Pour it out. Amen. We're going to let you go. God bless you so much. I have her cash app here. If you desire to give and sow into her life, um, cash app, Tanya N. Anderson, PayPal at Tanya N. Anderson. Yeah. Was it Tanya? Um, Tanya this? N. Ta PayPal, Tanya N. Anderson, and then 22 at the end. Okay. Let me, let me fix that really quick, you guys. Just 22 at the end and that's it? Yes. Okay. Tanya N. Anderson, 22. There we go, y'all. All right. So you desire to sow, you can sow here. Are you just, even if you say, I just want to sow into the prayer encounter, I can't be there. I'm too far. Can't get a plane. Can't drive. I want to sow into it. You can also sow it um, through the Cash App as well as PayPal. All right. God bless you, Pastor. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you inviting us out. We are excited at what the Lord is about to do. Amen. 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 I love you. Okay, we will talk soon. Yes. God bless you. Blessings. Blessings. <laughs> All right. So I know you guys enjoy that. I enjoy every moment of, of it. Seeing the presence of the Lord. God is so faithful. He is so faithful. I'm excited about what he is doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up her flyer in just a moment. Um, on, um, on August 18th, 19th, Teach My Hands to War Conference. If you have not, the Freedom Conference, if you have not registered yet, tonight is the last night to get that Father's Day special. All right. The conference um, fee, as she said, we have to, you know, we got a building. We got um, we got a building. We got speakers coming in. I uh, want to offset it. Want to be a blessing to them as well. So the conference is ninety dollars. But tonight, as of, at the end, eleven fifty nine tonight, up to eleven fifty nine tonight is seventy dollars. So go ahead. Register tonight. Bring a friend. Bring your family. This is not a women's conference. This is male, female. We got also speaker, apostle, Ann Harris, Fayetteville, North Carolina. If you haven't heard her testimony or experienced what God has done through her or is doing through her, you're not going to want to miss it. We have apostle Karen McNair. You're not going to want to miss it. <laughs> we have um, Friday night. We have... Um, Apostle Melvin Thompson, you're not going to want to miss it. Amen. God is just moving mightily. We have Annette Groves from Atlanta, Georgia. You're not going to want to miss it. We have a, um, Pastor um, Eugenia Tidwell. You're not going to want to miss it. We also have our guest, Thomas, um, Dr. Claudia Elliott. Um, I think she's from Fuquay Arena area, near Raleigh area. Then we also have Jeffrey... Um, I just so used to calling him Jeffrey, but we also have Jeffrey, the one who did the soundtrack for um, Come Out in Jesus Name movie. Um, come, come, come. He's going to come and minister in song. He definitely, I'm having to sing my song, Life Changer. Amen. Also song, also soundtrack. Go and look up these men and women of God. I'm going to pop up that flyer and then I'm going to pop up the flyer for Pastor Ty Anderson. Okay. All right. We are excited. Amen. If you desire to teach my hands the war, you can also, you can buy it through there or you can buy it through my cash app that we already posted. All right. Till next time. Keep them blessings. <laughs>